ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Robert Sports Show. Robert Sports Show from the independent scene to the main event of WrestleMania. We are going to review TNA Under Siege. Happened on Friday night from Albany, New York. Part of TNA Plus. Also on Thriller TV. Um, so each month TNA does these... Um, TNA Plus specials, premium live events, and you can, if you get the uh, TNA Plus through their app, you get these included, and then they have the big four pay-per-views that they are $49.99, you can buy them through the app, or you can buy them on Thriller TV as well. They're just glorified impacts, um, just like when NXT does Roadblock or Spring Breakin', that's kind of what these are, just kind of a little more advanced. Some of these matches were good. Only one, to me, kind of stood out, and based on who's in it, it should have stood out. But the, there's three countdown to Under Siege matches, and these were just not good. Um, first match was Rhino versus VSK. Um, VSK, I've actually followed him for quite a while now. He has wrestled in a bunch of different independent companies, along with PPW, Along with Ring of Honor, he's been on, uh, uh, let's see, Beyond Wrestling. He's part of AEW at one point as well. Creative Pro Wrestling, so he's kind of been all over the place. Um, he was Jeeves at one point there in AEW. Um, and so he took on the Man Beast Rhino. The match was three minutes long. This was just a glorified squash match. I give it one and a quarter star. Next up, we had just two random ass tag teams. We had the new FBI, Ray Jazz and Zach Clayton, along with Guido taking on the Batari, um, Kudama and Aviano, Mariana. Um, this match, again, short, four minutes long. FBI, Ray Jazz and Zach Clayton getting the victory. I ended up giving it two star. And then the final match on the countdown was the TNA Digital Media Championship on the line. Champion Laredo Kid taking on um, KC Navarro. Now, KC Navarro is currently the House of Glory um, Cruiserweight Champion. You also see Laredo Kid on that show because House of Glory had Cinco de Mayo on Sunday. And KC Navarro defended his House of Glory title. Um, oh, wait, what show is Laredo Kid on this weekend? Oh, yeah, he was on the main event of House of Glory with uh, Finn Del Zero and Mamieta. So, yeah, so we had two GCW shows, a TNA show, and a House of Glory show this weekend, and you had multiple talent kind of all over the place. Um, but those, Laredo Kid defended his uh, digital media title against KC Navarro. I give it three stars, a six minutes, 42 minute match, but a good little match. That's one of those matches you see just kind of start to show off. All right, when TNA Under Siege went live, the first match was a tag team match. We had Eric Young teaming up with Josh Alexander, taking off Frankie Kazarian and Steve Macklin. Josh Alexander gave Eric Young matching headgear to what he wears. Um, that just has to do with the storyline of Steve Macklin and Eric Young. How Steve Macklin and Josh Alexander's had a couple matches. Eric Young's got involved in that feud. And then they went into this tag match here. Overall, it was a pretty good match. Um, TNA Originals, Eric Young and Frankie Kazarian on opposite teams. Which is a little different, but Josh Alexander, we know how good he is. He should be in the main event scene, not dealing with this crap. Um, I ended up giving the match three and a quarter with Eric Young and Josh Alexander getting the victory. Next up we had Ash by Elegance with her concierge taking on Havoc with Rosemary at her side. The concierge, which is Jordan Iceman, he had holy water that he was trying to um take out Havoc with. He was, he said he went to some local church and got holy water. I had a little squeeze bottle of holy water. It said holy water on it. 
So he's like trying to neutralize Havoc by throwing water on her. Ash by Elegance comes out with garlic cloves around her neck like they're vampires in there and it's Havoc and Rosemary. Come on now. So this entire match was literally five minutes of playing off of that. Havoc scaring Ash by Elegance and overpowering her. Um, George Ashman throwing holy water on Havoc and Rosemary. It was just like, oh my god, is this match over yet? It wasn't good. I ended up giving it one and three quarter star. Um, Ash by Elegance getting a victory. It was just like, are you serious? This was an explosion. You would have done this on explosion, not on a premium live event. Uh, next up, we had Joe Hendry versus Zachary Wentz. If you say his name, he will appear. Um, I think Joe Hendry, I think the gimmick is good for him. I think he's good in the ring. Uh, Zachary Wentz, part of the Rascals, um, one of the one of the great tag, X Division and tag guys in TNA right now. Um, this match lasted five minutes, so it wasn't like it was a long match. I ended up giving it two and three quarters with Joe Hendry getting the victory. I do want to see more out of Joe Hendry. I do want to see him get maybe an X Division title match, maybe get a digital media back, get back the digital media title, and do some more with it and kind of build him up as that kind of guy. Uh, right now, he's just another guy. He needs to be the guy. Um, but him getting the victory there in two and three quarter star. Uh, next up, we have the TNA World Knockout Tag Titles on the line. We had champions Spitfire, Danny Luna, and Jody Threat. They beat Masha Slamovich and Killer Kelly, MK Ultra, but MK Ultra ended up breaking up. Alicia Edwards had won a number one contender match um, for the knockout tag titles. Didn't have a, didn't have a partner. Um, begged Masha to be her partner because Alicia Edwards is part of the system. System is Eddie Edwards and Brian Myers, who are TNA Tag Team Champions, and Moose, who is the TNA World Heavyweight Champion. So she wanted the title. So she begged Masha to team with her. Um, this was kind of a it was kind of a weird little matchup. Um, Masha and Alicia Edwards are doing stuff behind the referee's back. Alicia hit Danny Luna with a kendo stick behind the back of the referee. Masha did this hit, and I think she hit Jody Threat with something behind the referee's back. And it just kind of it was one of those things, everything was done kind of the heel stuff behind the back of the referee. Six minutes, new TNA knockouts, world tag team champions, Alicia Edwards and Masha Slamovich are part of the system. I ended up giving that two and a half because of all the little shenanigans going on. Next up, we had Rich Swan with. AJ Francis taking on Jake something. AJ Francis, again, behind the back of the referee was attacking Jake something. Um, did a couple times. Diener comes out. Was kind of trying to be on Jake something's side. And it just like, just never had good flow to it. Um, this whole faction with Bridget. Uh, Rich Swan and AJ and AJ Francis kind of doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, those two together, it's like what? And they kind of trash on Jake something here, from my opinion. But Rich Swan ended up getting the victory with help from AJ Francis. I gave it two and three quarter star. A match I was really looking forward to when it was announced, but that was Jonathan Gresham and Kushida. Jonathan Gresham comes out wearing this mask. And some of the vignettes they've been doing is he's got a different mask for a different personality. And he's trying to kind of only show, he only showed, everybody Everybody has multiple different masks they wear. Masks when they're around their family and when they're in business meetings. A mask when they're in, you know, around their buddies kind of deal. And he comes out in this kind of weird looking mask. And it's like, okay, he's not really the octopus, but... During the match, there was like black stuff around his mouth coming down to the mask. And it looked like at one point it was like ink on his hands from this. It was like kind of freaky a little. It's like, what is going on here? Why are we doing this? Um, him getting the victory over Kushida. But it was like, to me, it was overshadowed by 
This isn't the octopus Jonathan Gresham that was Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Champion that we've known as one of the greatest mat-based wrestlers in pro wrestling. This was a kind of a weird Jonathan Gresham with the mask and then the black stuff coming out of it. This is, it's going to be interesting to see where they go with the character. They're, it's like they're trying to overproduce the character. Just let Jonathan Gresham go wrestle. Um, I ended up getting a match to restart with Jonathan Gresham getting the victory. Next up, we had an intergender tag team match. This stems from Rebellion when we had John, Jordan Grace taking on Steph Delander for the knockout title. And then PCO was watching Jonathan Gresham, or Jordan Grace's back. And then Khan got involved. And we had that whole, as I described it, pure trash. Well, now we did a tag match. So we had Jordan Grace teaming up with PCO, taking on Khan and Steph Delander. <sighs> yeah, I mean, it was one of those things where when Jordan Grace, the TNA knockout champion, picks up Khan, he's a big dude, mind you. He was part of the Ascension back in uh, his uh, um, WWE days, Connor and what was the other, what was his name then? He was Connor. Um, let's see if I can pull up when he was in old double double E, who his partner, who his tag partner was. Um, Victor, who actually is Zion in NWA that I did not know. Anyway, so you have Jordan Grace pick him up. It's not... To me, it's like, okay, if, you, if Jordan Grace can wrestle Khan, why is she in the women's division? It, it doesn't make a lot of... And when she gets beat for the knockouts title, is it really that believable? Um, so, yeah, this match was just 10 minutes of just plunder, and, yeah. It was okay, but once Jordan Grace ended up slamming Khan, it was like, this just kind of took it away, kind of... Took me out of it. It was like, ugh, okay. You know, it was a little less than 11 minutes. Uh, Jordan Grace and PCO getting the victory. I ended up giving it two and a half. I mean, it was okay. It wasn't nothing that spectacular. Um, match of the night for me was the TNA X Division Championship match, which was the first of two main events is the way they booked it. The TNA X Division Champion, Mustafa Ali, taking on Ace Austin. Um, Ace Austin winning the number one contendership on Impact this week. Um, match was just hella good. The fact that you have three-time X Division champion Ace Austin taking on Mustafa Ali. Two guys who can use the ropes to their advantage, but they also can use the mat to their advantage. Um, you just had a great back-and-forth match here. Where you had Mustafa... Getting Ace Austin on the outside, you had Ace Austin getting his playing card and doing the cut between, you know, like a paper cut and that kind of thing. 16 and a half minutes of these two guys going at it. I ended up giving it a three and three quarters star for match of the night. Then our main event. The system. Brian Myers, Eddie Edwards, and Moose. I'm sorry. Mustafa Ali retained his X Division title there against Ace Austin. The System, Brian Myers, Eddie Edwards, Moose, taking on Speedball Mountain, and delete, 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 the Broken Matt Hardy, um, having them all come out in matching gear, matching kind of the, the big coat that the Broken Matt Hardy wears, was actually pretty darn comical. Um, this match got hardcore. You had tables, you had chairs, you had... Um, trash cans. You had a little bit of everything in this match. Um, you had a few... Oh gosh, I can't, I'm trying to remember every kind of run down the match in my head here. Um, you had Moose go through a table that was like, by Matt Hardy, it was like, whoa. Um, it looked legit like it hurt. Um, the fact that you have your top town in the six-man tag match. It was kind of like, ugh. Overall, it was a good match. The system ended up getting the victory over Speedball Mike Bailey, Matt Hardy, and Trent Seven. I ended up giving it a three and a half star. Um, yeah. 
I just some of the booking on this card is like, okay, what's next? Where do we go from here? You know. And so I was like, okay, let's just kind of wait and see what happens with the, who, who's Moose going to defend the title against. My guess is Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy, I think he won the title at one point in time in TNA. I don't recall. He's been everywhere in it. Um, I know he talked about Brother Nero, so I don't know if Jeff's coming in too. I mean, he's almost 50 years old, Mr. Matt Hardy is. Let's see, is TNA, yeah, he was TNA World Heavyweight Champion two times. Hmm, interesting. Didn't I realize that? Obviously with Brother Nero, he was Tag Team Champions a couple times. But, uh, so I'm assuming we're going to end up having Speedball at, um, the next show, which is, let's see, what is the next show for TNA? Against all odds on June 14th and the slam anniversary on July 20th. I'm assuming at one point in time there we're going to have uh, Brian Myers and Eddie Edwards take on Speed, Speedball Mountain. We're going to have Matt Hardy versus Moose. Um, my guess is Chris Bay, which is the tag team partner of Ace Austin, part of uh, um, Bull Club there in TNA, will take on Mustafa Ali. Uh, I'm guessing PCO and Khan at some point. Maybe step to land or Jordan Grace a second time. Not sure where they go with John Aggression from here. Um, AJ Francis and Jake something. I could see them building that up. The women's tag titles. Maybe a rematch coming up. Maybe Ash by Elegance and Rosemary something. We're going to build some things off of this card for the future. That's going to be interesting to see as well. Um, but that is TNA Under Siege. As always, thanks for watching Robert Sports Show. Remember, Robert Sports Show, from the independent scene to the main event of WrestleMania. As always, don't just have a great night. Have a spiffy night. Robert Sports Show, your YouTube leader in sports show content.